This video is best viewed on a full screen at 1080p quality. Click the gear at the lower right corner of the video window. Next, click the quality option. And finally, select 1080p. Okay guys, before we get started, I just want to do a quick two minute explanation of the method I'm going to use to compare projectors for you. Uh, I do not do what most people do, which is to play a movie clip and record the screen with a video camera. And the reason for this is because video cameras automatically adjust for brightness and other things to present the best image possible. Now, I don't necessarily want to present the best image. What I want to do is present the most accurate image for you. Okay, so here we have some uh, image of some colored smoke. It's being projected from our $100 off-brand budget projector. The image doesn't look too bad, and again, that's because our video camera is automatically making adjustments for brightness and other things. Um, now watch that image on the left as I uncover the brighter name brand projector on the right side. Do you see how the image on the left changes brightness depending on the brightness in the room? And that is the reason that I'm not going to videotape the projected images. Instead, I'm going to take still pictures of the projected images uh, side by side without any automated adjustments. Uh, this will give you a much more accurate representation of each projector I'm reviewing for you. I'm projecting all of the images in a dimly lit room rather than a dark room. For this, I'm using two shaded lamps placed about 12 feet diagonally from the center of the screen, and each lamp has a small 15-watt chandelier bulb in it. The ambient light in the room measures 4 lumen at the center of the screen. So the two most important factors in your home theater are obviously the projector and the screen, and that's why I want to quickly mention the type of screen I'm projecting onto. In this case, it's a spandex projector screen instead of the more typical blackout material. There are several advantages to this type of screen, uh, one of which it can attach to a $30 backdrop stand. Uh, it's easy to do. You just take some five spring clips and you attach the screen to the backdrop stand. And this can be used outdoors in your backyard or take it with you camping or to a party. And the screen I have here is made in the USA by Stretch Screen USA. It's available on Amazon for around $80, which is actually less than a do-it-yourself uh, fixed frame type screen. Uh, you don't have to buy wood, corner bracket staples, and actually build the frame as you do with that type of frame. The other advantage uh, is that you don't need a permanent empty wall space. For example, the situation I have here is a little awkward to put up a fixed frame screen because I have a staircase in the way. But with the spandex projector screen, that's not a problem. It literally only takes 30 seconds to put up this screen. Right here, we're all halfway done already. It just simply attaches to five small hooks that are uh, in the ceiling, and you can barely see them. And the corner brackets, the, their bottom corners, attach with a bungee to something as simple as a water jug or whatever you want to uh, use for that. And there you have it. The screen is completely up. Now just compare that to a pull-down screen, which are big, heavy. You typically need two people to move these things around, and you're not going to throw it in your car and take it somewhere, or even move it from room to room. Uh, with the spandex screen, look at how easy this is to take down. Not a problem. And there you go. If you have five hooks in the other room, another 30 seconds and you got it up. So here you can see the spandex projector screen produces a really good image, but that's only half the story. Check this out. If we pick up our camera and walk around behind the screen, you can see that the spandex projector screen can also act as a backlight screen. That's like getting two screens in one. No other type of projector screen can do this. Now one of the biggest advantages of uh, rear projection is that you can walk in front of the screen without blocking the projected image. This really comes in handy if you're doing like an outdoor movie with a bunch of kids because they can run around in front of the screen without ca casting shadows on the screen because the projector is actually behind the screen. Now buyer beware, you may be tempted to go with a cheaper knockoff version from China, but 
Go with the one made in the USA. It's Amazon's choice, even at a higher price, and it has 147 reviews so far, where the cheap one only has three reviews, which can easily be faked. So here's the Amazon product page of the spandex projector screen that I have, and they have images along the left. As you can see, the it's a much cleaner design instead of sewn crooked and all that, and the fabric is a much higher quality. It's a tighter weave which will give you better colors and a sharper image. And here is a real world example of that. I have the two screens hung side by side with the Made in the USA one on the left and the Chinese knockoff version on the right. And you can really see the difference in the color quality, the brightness, the saturation. And if you look at this next image here, you can actually see how much detail you lose in the smoke due to the uh, looser weave of the cheaper fabric. And in the final example here, just take a look at the stars in the sky. You can see you are almost non-existent in the cheaper fabric of the Chinese knockoff version. So get the Made in the USA screen. If you spent money on a projector, you're going to want a good screen. Here's the product page one more time, and I put a link in the description to make it easy for you. All right, let's get going. Compare our projectors. Here you can see the size comparison between the 100 lumen Nebula Capsule 480p projector and the AK1 Plus budget projector with a claimed rating of 2200 lumen and a slightly higher 540p resolution. And as you can see the 100 lumen Nebula Capsule is actually brighter than the 2200 lumen AK1 Plus. Here's some primary color squares projected. Uh, you might want to pause this. This is the actual uh, lumen brightness rating of each of the colors uh, produced by each projector. The Nebula capsule has a little bit more natural colors, and if we uh, zoom in on it, you can see the pixel patterns produced by each projector. Here we'll show the color transitions. As you can see, the Nebula capsule has smoother color transitions between uh, some of the colors. And our next picture will kind of show similar results uh, with the AQ1 Plus having some harsh transitions between some of the colors there. Here we have a colored smoke pattern. Uh, the Nebula capsule is, produces a brighter image, but it has less contrast. And we can zoom in on that and we'll see the difference in the pixels. And here's the similar smoke on a dark background. The nebula has better purple colors, but a little less contrast. And we can zoom in on that one. And here's a good uh, shadow highlight chart. The nebula capsule has uh, better shadows, we can notice. And if we zoom in on that, you'll also notice the nebula, the grays look a little bit more natural without any color tint to them. This is a great photo for showing contrast, and the nebula capsule has better shadow details, as we can see in the hair there. And zooming in, we see the nebula doesn't have the blue tint that the AK-1 projector does. And in this highlight photo, you can see the difference here. The nebula capsule just has a true white color and no blue tint as the AK-1 does. And here we'll compare the shadow details. The Nebula capsule has better shadow detailers, a brighter image. And let's zoom in on that one. The AK1 Plus is much darker than the Nebula. This is a good test photo for showing shadows and highlights. They both have similar highlights in the white dog, but the Nebula capsule has better shadow areas looking at the cat. Now we'll test the resolution by showing a series of grid patterns. The nebula produces a sharper image than the AK1 Plus, and we can zoom in and you'll notice that a little bit more here. And another grid pattern. The nebula again is sharper. The AK1 Plus kind of loses focus near the edges of its projected area. That's probably due to just a lower quality lens. And here we'll have another grid pattern. The nebula capsule does better in reproducing the grid without as many artifacts. And zooming in on that, you can see the sharpness difference. That's partly due to the lens quality. And comparing text projected by each projector, you can see even though the nebula is slightly lower resolution, it produces a little bit crisper text. And for skin tones, the nebula capsule produces more natural skin tones with less contrast. And if we zoom in on that one, uh, you can really see the difference there. Brighter and better looking. And a few more skin tone images here. 
Uh, same thing, more natural with less contrast on the nebula capsule. This is a good image for color comparison. The nebula capsule seemed to have less detail, maybe less contrast in the brighter colors. And if we zoom in on that, you can see um, the AK1 uh, is a little bit out of focus near the edges of its projection. Here's a similar image to compare colors, and uh, we have the same results as the last one. Here we have a nice, uh, somewhat foggy scene, and the 100 lumen nebula capsule is actually brighter than the 2200 lumen AK1+. And that brightness, uh, as you can see here, brings out the shadow details better in the nebula capsule. We can also see the better shadow details uh, looking at the sky here. The nebula capsule is noticeably better. And zooming in, we can see the nebula capsule produces a crisper image. And in this image, we can look at the spotlight here. The nebula capsule highlights are slightly blown out, but uh, nothing too drastic. I think it still produces a nicer image in comparison. In this image, you will notice that the nebula capsule is evenly lit from center to edge as opposed to the AK1+, and it has better contrast uh, overall. Here's a good image to test shadow details, and once again, the nebula capsule beats out the AK1+, just has better shadow details. And if we zoom in on that, you'll notice the nebula capsule produces a much sharper pyramid. And another image to demonstrate, the nebula has better shadow details and slightly blown out highlights, but it does produce an overall better image. And here we will clearly see how much brighter the nebula capsule uh, appears to be. And zooming in on this photo, uh, you really see the difference in the details. The bolt seemed to disappear into the shadows of the AK-1 projector. And here's a good nighttime photo. This really shows a drastic difference between the nebula capsule, how much brighter the background appears. And zooming in on this one, you can see the AK-1+, the background, is almost non-existent. Here's another good high contrast photo. Uh, once again, we'll see the nebula capsule has better shadow details. And if we zoom in on this one, you can see the lens quality is better on the nebula capsule. Here's a hot air balloon, nice high contrast image again, slightly better colors on the nebula capsule. And fireworks in the night sky. The nebula capsule, even though it has a slightly lower resolution, does a better job at preserving the fine line details of the fireworks. And our final image, stars in the night sky. You can see the nebula has better shadow details, especially in the bottom of the image there, you can see that. And zooming in uh, has much better uh, details overall. Next, we're going to compare the Nebula capsule to a quote-unquote full-size name-brand BenQ projector that's rated at 2,000 lumen. You'll learn in some of my other reviews that the name-brand 2,000 lumen projectors are actually many times brighter than the so-called 2,000 lumen budget projectors that sell on Amazon for under $150. Here's a quick brightness comparison between the sub $100 DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed rating of 1800 lumen and the name brand BenQ projector rated at 2000 lumen. From this picture, it's clear that the claims of cheap knockoffs are not always true. I think you'd agree the BenQ projector on the right is much more than 10% brighter than the budget projector on the left. The same holds true for the quality of your projector screen. Here's a quick comparison between a cheap $30 spandex projector screen made in China on the right and an $80 spandex projector screen made in the USA on the left. As you can see, it's worth spending a bit more for the higher quality image you'll get. With that being said, you will remember from the beginning of this video I showed you that I was projecting these images onto a white spandex projector screen. However, if you want to use your projector in a room that's not totally dark, or if you want to use it outside, like in your backyard for an outdoor movie, or take a camping, or to a party or something, there are two things you may want to consider. A brighter projector and the darker silver spandex projector screen. 
Even though the silver screen looks quite a bit darker than the white screen, it'll actually give you a nice bright image with more contrast, which is especially useful when you can't get an environment that's completely dark, such as being outside with a full moon or if there's streetlights nearby. Now the other benefit of the darker silver spandex screen is that you won't have to wash it as often if you accidentally drop it on the ground because you won't notice dirt as much on the darker fabric. But keep in mind, if the spandex screen does get dirty, you can just throw it in the washer using cool water and then dry it for 10 to 15 minutes in the dryer and it's good as new. That's not as easy with some other types of projector screens. And finally, you'll remember when I showed you the rear projection ability of the white spandex projector screen, well, the silver screen has that same ability. Okay, let's continue with our BenQ comparison. Here you can see the size difference between the 100 lumen Nebula capsule with 480p resolution versus the 2000 lumen BenQ 1080p projector. And of course the 2000 lumen BenQ is much brighter than the 100 lumen Nebula capsule. Here's an example of the colors with the BenQ being much brighter. You can pause this slide if you like. This is the actual lumen measurement of each color from each projector. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room like the other slides. And zooming in you can see the pixels of the lower resolution nebula. Next we'll show you a few color charts. Both have pretty good colors, uh, the main difference being the brightness between the two projectors. Colored smoke slide, uh, nice color from each one, the nebula being dimmer and more pixelated. Similar image with the smoke on the dark background and similar results. And next we'll look at the highlight shadow chart. Uh, when we zoom in on this one, check out the difference between the text, how much sharper the BenQ is. Here the nebula can't produce the contrast that the brighter BenQ projector does. Uh, highlights look decent from both, but when we get into the shadows, you'll see the capsule is much duller which is even more noticeable when we zoom in. Our next image you'll notice the nebula has less shadow detail and the series of graphs here you can really tell the difference just the resolution and the brightness of the BenQ uh, just allow it to produce a nicer looking graph which is to be expected. Considering the much lower specs of the Nebula capsule, it actually does a really good job of uh, producing a nice image, but uh, as you can see, it just can't compete with a full-size name brand projector. And it shouldn't be expected to. The Nebula actually even manages to produce a legible text, but when we zoom in, you'll see that uh, it really can't compete with the full 1080p uh, BenQ. And both projectors do produce good skin tones, uh, it's just the BenQ is much brighter and sharper, which you really notice when we zoom in on the image here. To be fair, you need to keep in mind that this really isn't a fair comparison. Um, just look at the specs and you'll see what I mean. Uh, 100 lumen versus 2000 lumen and 480p versus 1080p. Uh, I just wanted to give you an example of what a true full-size decent projector will give you compared to a smaller battery operated projector. And it's up to you to make up your mind which one you feel uh, fits your needs the best. Whether you want better portability or a better quality image. Here you really see the contrast difference. The BenQ has much more contrast just because it's brighter and better resolution produces a sharper image. The shadow detail not quite as good on the nebula and uh, here again same thing. When we zoom in on the bridge here notice the rivets uh, how much more detail they are on the higher resolution BenQ and much brighter background on the BenQ. You'll see the difference in the shadows here and the details. You'll notice the fine line details in the fireworks and our final picture, the stars in the sky. So my final advice is as follows. If you're always going to be using your projector in a totally dark room, then the brightness isn't as important as the resolution. It'd be better to get a dimmer projector with a higher resolution. 
So if your viewing environment isn't totally dark, such as a room with windows and you don't have blackout curtains during the day, or you're outside where there may be street lights or a glowing moon, then you'll want to go with a brighter projector. But remember that cheap projectors are almost never as bright as they claim to be. And as far as resolution goes, I would typically pick a less bright projector with a higher resolution over a brighter projector with a lower resolution. You can always try to make your room darker, but you'll never be able to increase the resolution of your projector. I personally would never get a projector with a resolution below 720p, which is a resolution of 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. The reason for this is that you'll most likely be enlarging the video to about 9 feet across, and at that size you can actually see the individual pixels on lower resolution projectors. I think a 1080p projector is about the highest resolution you'd need, as a 4K projector doesn't really add all that much to the picture quality for the much higher price you'd be paying. Here's a screenshot from a YouTube video that compares a 4K projector versus a 180p projector. It's being projected onto a wall, but even so, there's really not much difference between the quality. As far as sound goes, I would recommend an external speaker of some sort, as most projectors that I've come across under $500 do not have great sound quality. But I will say I was fairly impressed with the sound I got from the soda can sized Nebula capsule. You'll also want to consider if you'd like a portable projector that can run on batteries, as opposed to a projector that has to be plugged into the wall. The portability of the smaller projectors is always nice, but keep in mind that the battery life is almost always under two hours, but it is not limited to running on the battery only. You can always plug it in for unlimited run time. As far as portable projectors go, I really like the AXA brand. The P300, P700, and M5 projectors have a fairly high resolution, nice colors, and good brightness. The Nebula capsule also produces a decent image with a really good speaker, but it does have a lower resolution than the three AXA projectors. Alright everybody, thanks for your time. I hope you found this video informative, and if you think others would find it helpful, please click the thumbs up button, which makes it easier for them to find it. And also don't forget to click on the links for the Spandex projector screens below in the description, and check back for more projector comparison videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching.